For my family, gotta build a legacy. I'ma be the man when I'm dead. Work too hard, I can't slip up, so I'm clutching tight on this layer. Hey, what's up, everybody? CW Entertainment back with another MLB The Show 21. Back with the New York Mets franchise. Today, we do have two uploads going up. This video, and then we're gonna have the game video versus the San Diego Padres. We're gonna be starting up that series. But yeah, so this one, um, we're gonna be going over pretty much what happened basically in the last month. You know, what's kind of going around the league. League leaders, stats, awards, all-star voting, stuff like that. So, let's go ahead and hop into it. First things first, we did end up actually doing the MLB draft. So, went ahead and did that. Really, that was the first time I did a draft on this game. Uh, normally, either A, don't make it that far, or B, just really don't care about doing it. So, the first pick in our draft that we made, ended up getting a left fielder who has potential to be a 94. So, he's definitely going to be the best player. I was definitely looking at some left-handed like pitching. I know this at this point it may not matter unless I carry it over if they're gonna bring the carryover feature back. So I'm not sure if this stuff's gonna matter. But I mean, you know, we made some solid picks here and there, some bad ones. So, but clearly Norm Holden definitely has the best potential. He's a left-handed batter, and he's got potential to be, you know, a future star potentially. So. That could be something we look into, you know, if we hop on with the same Mets and we carry it over from last year, so, or like this year's version into next year, so that'll be something to look at. We do have an all-star game coming up, and we can go ahead and take a look right now. We got at least three starters, and we got some other guys that are fighting for that position. So, J.D. Davis, Jacob DeGrom, and Francisco Lindor right now, they're all considered the starters for the all-star game. We do got some other starting pitching. Got Noah Syndergaard, who's number five on this list. 15,000 votes back from Sonny Gray. So, he, I don't know, I don't know how many starters they take. I don't know if they take, if they take five or if they only take four or three. You know, I'm not too positive. Carrasco's not too far down, and that's probably going to do it for our starters. That's not, you know, Jacob DeBron, of course. And then, uh, lead pitching, Trevor May and Seth Lugo, honestly, I think both of these guys be a little bit higher than that, but they may not get as much burn as some of the other guys. Like Robert Stevenson, I mean, he's pitched 43 innings. Like, for the most part, our guys aren't going that, pitching that many games, you know, because our, our starting rotation is so good. Closing pitcher, Edwin Diaz and Kenley Jansen. I don't know if they'll take more than one uh, closing pitcher, but it looks like Jansen's going to have this one locked up by the time. I mean, he's almost, he's well over 100,000 votes in front of Diaz, so... We'll see how that goes. Didn't help that, you know, Diaz's last uh, chance for that save opportunity ended up being blown by a walk-off home run. Thank you, Diamondbacks. Catch your watch, James McCann. Yeah, he's, he's not making this. I'm, no offense, McCann has had a roller coaster type of year. I'm honestly surprised Austin Nola's probably not ahead of JT Rimuto. Maybe because of batting average and he's not far off on home run and RBI, but, you know. You know Maybe that maybe he just started, you know, popping off here lately. First base, Paul Goldschmidt. I'm not surprised Peter Alonzo's way to the peak. You know, he started off injured for the first couple weeks, and you know, he's just a matter of getting back into it. He's not too many votes back, but I'm not unless he's going on a tear here soon. I'm not expecting Peter Alonzo to be making the All Star game. Second base, Jeff McNeil. He'll probably be. I would imagine he gets in there as a reserve. Behind Arvin, since he is number two on the list. Um, he's a clear, well, I shouldn't say a clear favorite number two right now. 34 votes ahead of Michael Stockton, so, you know, he got a good opportunity to make it. J.D. Davis, we know, leading us. Behind him, Nolan Arenado. J.D.'s got a pretty good lead on him. J.D.'s average. He leads the league in home runs along with Lindor. Ooh, we'll take a look. Oh, no, what? I forgot. Lindor ended up hitting uh, another home run. My bad. Didn't mean to back out of that. Lindor has the lead in home runs with 19 of them. Only got 28 RBIs. Doesn't get too many RBI opportunities because where we bat him at. Got a guy like Corey Seager who's probably batting in the third or four hole for the Dodgers. So, he's going to have a, a good more RBI opportunities. Left field, we got Lourdes Gurriel Jr. I'm, I'm not expecting him to be able to catch up to Yelich. Almost 100,000 votes behind him. He may be able to slip past in there and get past Jesse Winker, since, especially since he's on a cold spell. Gurriel's going to have to turn it up a notch if he wants to get into that second spot, though. Acuna, no problem. Leading that uh, center fielder, Rosarena, he's probably not going to come close. He's within 100,000 votes, but I'm just not expecting it. 
Then we got right field, Bryce Harper, Conforto on his heels. Has a very good opportunity to make it. Both had the same amount of home runs. We have a little bit more RBIs, but Harper is batting 345 on the year. He's looking great. Mookie Betts right behind us as well. So that right fielder, man, that's going to be an interesting chase right there. I'm not too worried about the American League. I mean, we'll flip over here to see what's going on. Judge is on the injured list. Trout. Alvarez, 456,000. Wow. Bogarts. Rendon. Fletcher. God, the Angels <laughs> got a lot of people. Ryan Mountcastle. Wow, for first base. That may not last. Mitch Moore is also on his heels. That's Monty Grandal, Trevor Rosenthal, Colin McHugh, and Ryan Yarbrough. Shane Beaver on his heels. 5,000 votes. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. And let's take a look at the stand and see how everything's been going on. Y'all already know we're leading the East. Got a nine game lead over the Phillies, who have been doing a lot better lately. They're 73 in their last 10 games. They're 15 and 14 in the divisional games. So. They definitely and look at that road. Wow, they are 22 and 10 on the road. That's impressive. 23 wins at nighttime, so they definitely play better at night. Uh, then we got the Nationals, 17 games back. Braves, 18 games back. And Marlins, 19 and a half back. All of them below 500. And right now, they do not look like they're going to be contending for the East. Got the Brewers, the Reds, tied up here in the Central. The Cubs are only two games back. The Cardinals, two and a half. And the Pirates, the lowly Pirates. Yet to reach 15 wins on the year. 16 and a half games back. That is a one and nine in the last 10. We play them at some point, I believe in the next month, right before the All-Star break. We better <laughs> we better not lose a game to the Pirates. Then we got the Dodgers, who is just taken off by storm. 16 and a half game lead over the Padres. The Padres are under 500. That's a team that's, you know, got World Series aspirations this year. And they are three games below 500. 16 and a half out of their own division. There's a good chance they're probably not even, uh, yeah, they're probably not a wild card team at the moment. The Diamondbacks, who gave us so much trouble with their 21st ring pitching staff, I just don't get it, you guys, I don't. And they are 17 and a half games back. Well, the interesting part is the other four in this division are all right there together within a couple of games. And then it's the Dodgers just way up there at the top. Dodgers have lost two in a row, though. That is surprising. Hey, yeah, we look at the wild card. The Phillies, Brewers, Reds, all in it. They're all tied at the top. Cubs only two back. Two and a half for the Cardinals, and the Padres are five games out of it. Take a look over into the American League. We got the Yankees. Looking like they might be the first team to be able to reach 40 wins on the American League. They got an eight-game lead over the Red Sox. They have definitely been on a tear. The Twins, 33-23, and 23, with the White Sox just a game back behind them. Then we flip over to the West, and the Astros, 34 wins. The Angels are a game and a half back. I believe last time we looked, the Angels were in first place. So that is interesting. Uh, Rangers, another team yet to reach 20 wins on the year. So I think we only got two teams that have yet to reach 20. That is the Rangers and the Pirates. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the league leaders. J.D. Davis leads the entire National League in batting average with a 374 average. Bryce Harper at 345. Jeff McNeil out of 329. So Jeff McNeil has been kind of sitting in this top five for a while. Um, at one point, McNeil did lead the league in a uh, batting average. J.D. Davis was up here, and then I'm pretty sure he fell off, and then he got back on another hot streak. So that has really propelled him up here. Hits, J.D. Davis leads the league, 74. McNeil tied with Bryce Harper at second, 70. Doubles, J.D. Davis leads it with 20. Mookie Betts right behind him. Francisco Lindor has 16. Lo Castro, yeah, not surprising. Triples leads with five. McCutcheon, surprisingly, though, has five as well. I know we don't have anybody anywhere close. Lindor, like we said, leads the National League in home runs. Leads the entire league in home runs. J.D. Davis is right behind him with one more off, and J.D. Davis also that makes him second. And then we got Mike Conforto with 16. I feel like Conforto's quietly just kind of hitting home runs on our team. You know, we really pumped up J.D. Davis and Lindor a lot. Well, Conforto, quietly just coming along here for us. And uh, let's see, we got, yeah, okay, Gurriel, yeah, you know, just right out, well, tied for that ninth spot. So, yeah. And then Peter Alonzo down there at 12th, inside the top 15. J.D. Davis leads the National League in RBIs. Conforto with 43. Run score, Lindor, yeah, he does get brought in a lot. That is one thing he does. He gets brought in a lot because he, he was getting on base a lot. Stolen base is good, great John Birdie got 21 already. And he's leading the league by a mile compared to the American League. I mean, good grief, dude. Entire National League's top five are leading the entire American League's number one guy. Like, my goodness. 
walks Joey Votto with 40. Honestly, I thought we were taking quite a bit of walks with Lindor. Let's just take a look how far down he is. I get it. We don't walk a lot anyway because normally we get better pitch selection. Yeah, he's 24. We don't, like I said, we don't take a lot of walks, but dang. I thought we were a little bit higher with Lindor just because, you know, he does get actually walked a lot. On base percentage, Bryce Harper, 449. That is unreal. He's getting on at a 45% clip. J.D. Davis leads us in slugging. Francisco Lindor right behind him as well. And Conforto in four. We got three in the top five. OPS, no surprise that we got one skin. Well, Conforto's not in the top five this time, but it's all right. He's number six. We're looking good. Wins on the year, Kershaw, nine. Stroman, DeGrom, both with seven. Taiwan, Taiwan Walker, I haven't pronounced this man's name, six. Not bad, not bad. Losses, DeGrom. Who the hell has has lost this year? Interesting. Kenley Jansen, 23 saves on the year. I don't think we're going to have many saves. Yeah, 12. I mean, Jansen has almost double what we have. It's because we've won some games that, you know, haven't been four run or three runs or less. ERA, Jacob DeGrom has passed Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray must have got blown up in his last outing because that thing was under one. Honestly, I, would let, I don't even know if he had. We'll have to go back and look at some point. But DeGrom now has the best ERA. What's crazy, his ERA in real life is like one point less than this. And that's real life. Like, it's unreal what DeGrom is doing in real life. He's definitely Cy Young this year as long as he keeps it going. And more than likely, he's going to end up with the MVP as well. Home runs allowed, Urias only three. Taewon Walker only three as well, okay. Syndergaard's giving up five. Dang, I mean, we're giving up with DeGrom, sheesh. Strowman says, okay, we're giving up way too many with DeGrom. And Carrasco with seven. Shoutouts to DeGrom and leads the league in two. Strikeouts, 103. 107 for Bieber, holy crap. Shane Bieber is lighting the gun up. Oh my goodness, Garrett Cole only 82. Wow. No over two complete games. In the pitch, we don't care. Walks allowed. Yeah. Whip, DeGrom, no surprise. Actually, our five. We got five in the top ten. So, I thought you, man, we got a great starting rotation. Pitch award, DeGrom, three. <laughs> Lighten it up. We got five in the tip. We got all five starters in the top ten again. Batting award, we got 3.9. Basically, a four for Bryce Harper. Conforto was up here. Wow, I'm surprised he's the highest batter we had. Two and a half. J.D. Davis just right behind him, 2.4 and a 2.3 for Lindor. Interesting. And before we, you know, move on to everything else, most valuable player, J.D. Davis right now leads the National League. Bryce Harper behind him. And Michael Conforto. I mentioned him. Conforto has quietly been doing very, very well for us this year. Did not know he was in the MVP race. But the fact that he is is very interesting. Like, I'm surprised it wasn't like Lindor. Lindor may have been up there, though, but... Jordan Alvarez, my goodness, man. <laughs> Batting 356, 17 home runs. Judge right behind him. Batting 381, man. Holy hell. What has gotten into Aaron Judge on this game? Cy Young, Jacob DeGrom, Kershaw, and Urias right behind him. Man, that's going to be a close race. Shane Bieber, not surprised there. Jose Quintana up there for the Cy Young. Good for him. Batting title, J.D. Davis. I'm not too worried about the rest of the American League after this point. We got reliever of the year, Jansen and Diaz. They're the only two up here. So it's coming down to them two, apparently. And my goodness, the Brewers won this thing three. I mean, I get hater won it back to back years, but man, they won it three years in a row. Rookie of the year, we don't have a rookie, I do not believe, so that makes sense. Uh, what's going on in the American League with them? Adley Russell. Hang hmm. Aaron Ward, JD Davis, Lindor on his heels, too. And yeah, Gold Glove, you already know it's not looking well for us. We well, apparently Peter Alonso is the only one who's doing anything with Gold Glove Wild. Peter Alonso has been very good for us defensively, actually. He's made some nice plays. Had some balls go under his glove before that was either marked up. All right, man, look, Guriel, you may be up here, but we all know. We all know. That film percentage really ain't 100, because I'm pretty sure you had one clink off your glove as well, like Conforto did. Or, you know, we just have issues, you know, tracking down the ball. But he does have six assists. He's gunned some people out. It's probably a good, that may be more of a reason why he's up here, but I'm sure it is that, you know, 100%, 1,000% from uh, fielding. A Rosarena, okay, yeah, I do forget about a Rosarena now sometimes being fielded. And then, dude, like, I'm probably, you guys, we do not have this good fielding. We're not about to have three outfielders, or at least two right now being the league lead for Gold Glove, and then 
a Rosarena right behind Acuna. Like, this, this is ridiculous. Honestly, like, how is Conforto one? If anything, it's Harper. He's got four assists this year. But, you know, whatever. Silver Slugger for the pitcher, yeah. Carrasco could have been up here, man. He was batting like 300 at one point. Uh, Silver Slugger for catcher. Pete Alonzo's up here for first base. Second base, no. J.D. Davis, no surprise. Lindor's right behind Seager. Conforto in for the outfield. That's going to do it for us in the postseason. And that will do it for this. I don't think there's anything else I really need to go over. Um, I guess one last quick little list. or well, not list, but thing we'll look at. Dominic Smith. This time left is, you know, 12 days. I think we're going to have to put him on like the 10-day, maybe the 15. He should be back in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully, you know, he ends up coming back for us at some point this year. And that's what, you know... We're gonna have to figure out something with that man because this roster is kind of stacked <laughs> offensively like we really don't have a place to put them but that is a left-handed bat that we can't use in the lineup so when that does come uh, i'm sure we'll be able to figure something out but without further ado you guys i do want to say thank you all very much for watching you know just kind of this recap of what's going what's been happening in the last month we are going to be playing the San Diego Padres here in the next video. That's also going to be ended up releasing today. So I hope you guys did enjoy this quick little recap and breakdown of kind of what's been going on throughout the year for, you know, the entire league. We already kind of know what we've been doing for the most part this year. So I didn't go too much into our team. But yeah, like I said, hope you all did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe for more. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And I'm out to next time, everybody. Hope you guys stay safe out there. Catch you in the next video. Where's the Padres? Peace. And it's the love from my fans got me still here.